welcome to RAF Colby Grange. We're here in uh, the heart of Lincolnshire. Lincoln is just down the road and we've come to investigate this place. Um, Derek Accor has done it on ghost towns and lots of groups have been here and it really is a tremendous place. It was an active base until the 60s um, and it's full of character and it's just a lovely sight to be at and we're going to see what's going to happen. And it's quite poignant because today is the uh, anniversary of 9-11. So we're at an RAF base on 9-11. 40, early 41 is a relief landing ground for is it RAF Digby, which is not far away. Like, and it was like a, had a working fighters in the early part of the war. Then Canadians moved in with both fighter aircraft. Then towards mid-1943, early 44, there were the uh, mosquitoes that Canadians moved in. Um, like attacking like the uh, coastal roads, road bridges and stuff. And uh, late 44, it became the main night fight operations space in the old Lincolnshire. So, then uh, when it closed, it early 50s, it opened again with Americans at ICBM nuclear missiles, and it closed in the early 60s and that bit. So, uh, a lot of history to this place. Building downstairs, and there's like a few rooms off the bottom of the stairs, which just lead off this hallway. And as I walked past, I saw like a glimmer of a man and he was dressed in like a pilot's uniform. But he actually does want to be known. And also, when Andy went down to take a few photographs, Andy felt that there was someone down there who wanted to be known. Didn't you, Andy? Yeah. So that's all I picked up for now, but I think he will come forward if we actually ask him to. Mark. When Justin was doing his talk, um, I got a voice which said that, um, he's, that don't forget the Polish airmen. Oh, Polish, yeah, the Polish airmen. That was the so early part. Was saying about don't forget the Polish because she mentioned all the others and he didn't. He was quite upset. Oh, I'm sorry. Right there. <laughs> and that, that's it. But I also felt the presence of the man. Well, this man will definitely make himself known. Definitely. It's not horrible though. It's friendly. But I do think he would actually move things yeah. for us. Said what was that? And freaking out. What else have we seen? So shadowy. Crickets. No, I'm stood in corner. <laughs> And we were asking for footsteps to come towards us, and me and Justine, oh, we all heard it, yeah. didn't we? There was someone running to the room right quick behind me. We asked him to come in room with us. We said, if you're there, will you come in room with us? And then it, it went, you know, like this gravelly bit. And we were like, we're fast like that. And I thought it was Justine moving. We were Justine a little shocked, didn't she? And she just stood there. <laughs> I mean, every one of us heard it. Well, there, oh. And we've heard a few like taps and we've also heard like a few like movements like, like footsteps and stuff. While we've been downstairs investigating, uh, we were all stood in the room where I picked up on the gentleman and I threw a couple of stones and nothing really came back to the stones but we heard footsteps and me and Justine stood together at the back of the room and then all of a sudden we said can you walk into the room and we heard about four or five heavy footsteps like boot footsteps walk behind us and every one of us heard it didn't we? Yeah. And also um, we kept hearing like footsteps outside the room and we kept like seeing, I kept saying I could see like a white mist forming. And I thought so face, which I thought it were a window but there weren't a window there. She just thought they were glass and the window were like a reflection coming through and when she actually looked at it and inspected it there was nothing, there weren't even a window. And then we went into the front room what's under this and Gemma, four window to this side, like this side window. Um, Gemma thought she saw a shadow. Tall dark shadow. Tall dark shadow. She got scared. She actually ran back to us, didn't she? Yeah. But uh, Jackie also got a light on a digital camera on a In photo. In the same place. Same place. And also Justina has got some good photographs of light anomalies to what we captured downstairs. But if you keep calling out for something to come forward and walk towards you, it seems to actually acknowledge you. Don't say it and actually come towards you. Are you from Mastria? Look at that. You're here. You're in a stone. I'm a stone. stone. Well, that would be high, that. While we've been investigating, Jackie was asking for the man who was being picked up here to come forward. And I, at first he was really reluctant to come forward to me. But when he did, I picked up on the name Captain Richard. Right. But the weird thing is, he's got a double barrel name. It's not like Captain Richard Smith. It's Captain Richard Jones Smith. 
it's a it's a very strange name and he's also got a man here with him called Captain Thomas. And I feel I don't know if Justin knows anything about this. Now we're plugging it. It's an American American uh, rank now, Captain. It's like pulling to our flight lieutenant sort of thing. What do you come here then? Well the Americans here in the fifties. And do you know of anything about a crash that happened on runway? Well it was crash. No, I mean like actually the plane came down and crashed on the runway. Uh, not a fan now about Right, he crashed on this runway and I feel like he got up with like a, ba a bag on his shoulder. I mean, I don't know if you know about these bags, Justin. It was a bag with like a drawstring. Could it be like a parachute or something? It could have been actually, yeah. yeah. He just got up out of the crash and he was in spirit by then and he just slung it over his shoulder and walked away from the crash. John? Yeah. Uh, you asked to see if anyone else were with him. Yeah, I asked if he could give us some information to verify that we could look up and verify who is where could we see his name. And he told you we would be able to. Yeah, we've looked in past documents of this place and people that actually worked and landed and flew from here. His name will show up along with a photograph. And Captain Thomas, who died, he had a small child and a newborn child who had just recently been born when he had actually passed. But uh, we had a few noises, didn't we? Like a few tapping noises and things. But we had nothing else really major, did we, like that? Oh, look into it and get home. Mark, what did we pick up downstairs? We had um, footsteps outside. Um, we had a stone rattle down the corridor. Mm. Um, we thought we saw a shadow walk past the door. Um, but outside, definitely, somebody was walking around outside. And we all had a look at it and couldn't get it. And then Andy and myself were in the room and we had an air raid siren go off as clear as day. It was an air raid siren. And it went off for about a minute and Andy's got it on his machine. Uh, Andy, what did you, you heard somebody, didn't you speak? Oh yeah, it was, uh, um, Mark had just asked if there were anyone outside that wanted to come in. And they were a blunt no. Someone definitely said no. Oh, and also, could I add that while we was up here, uh, I was shouting yourself, John, I don't know if you heard me, but we all heard, did you hear exactly the metal part, the metal? It was like something really heavy and metal were being thrown, what was that? I didn't want to say straight away, but does it, someone that looks not so nice. I'm glad we mixed in group then. <laughs> There's someone that's not so nice, that's down there and they're not happy that we are actually here. This is the this it, the man who's down there who ain't happy that we're here, he's the man who would have been in charge. Can you draw us up? Look you out? Yeah. What from like your waist here? Well from your bike. Not like the two hundred people are going to try and lift me up like that. Oh, like, really? I swear, no, just here. If that were you, would have just touched Andy. Oh, well, that. Did you feel it? Yeah. I saw that walk around Yeah. You like to walk around it. I thought, Andy, did it go like that on your leg? Like, yeah. If that were really strong. Well, thank you for coming in and obeying orders at last. I'm not going to wear a store. I think I'll... That was the first one. Look at that. I didn't mean the first. I, I, I had to sort of land on the floor. Yeah, I did. Ooh. I'm just walking through. No, it's right on my face there, <laughs> I swear. Yeah, Somebody hit me. Did you feel it? No, it wasn't that. It wasn't. I don't know. Somebody hit me in the face. Got me in the eye. Like, bloody hell. <laughs> what are they walking through? <laughs> Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I wasn't expecting it. That was an imminent little wonder. If you did that, can you do it again? I don't mind you throwing. Just throw the eyes. <laughs> you never the eyes. Well, what a fantastic time we've had downstairs. I've been pelted with a stone in the face just above my eye there. And uh, it missed Gemma and Justina. How it missed them, I don't know. It hit me in the face, bounced off the wall, and went ting, ting, ting. Really good it was. Um, also, while we're down there, we've heard people walking around outside with heavy boots, because they were rattling all over, but when we went outside and shone torches, there was nothing there. And then we saw a shadow across the bottom go walking past. 
Um, we played We'll Meet Again by Vera Lynn, and while we're doing that, Gemma sensed the lady dancing. And while I was up here, I sensed that people, ladies working up here, ladies worked up here, definitely. And um, there's also a man outside, and the man outside cannot come in here, he's not allowed to come in here. Um, maybe it's because of his rank or something, but he's not allowed in this building. So he stays outside and he's watching. But overall, I found it a fantastic place, and um, hopefully one day we'll come back again and do it again. So, thank you all for watching.